Ministers, commissioners, civil society leaders. In 2000, we met in Dakar and we pledged to the children of the world that everything possible will be made to provide them with opportunity to education as they write. We even went further to say whenever a, a developing country would have a plan in place, resources wouldn't be a problem. In 2005, G8 leaders reiterated that commitment on behalf of all of us. Now it's 2007. We don't need more pledges and words. What we need is action, is pledges which are going to make a real difference in channeling the needed resources to promote education for every single child in the world, whether in the developed world, in the developing world. We all know the power of education to give a real start in life and to develop the full potential of every single human being to fight poverty, to fight diseases, to fight ignorance, and to fight HIV AIDS. And now, perhaps the most important thing is to listen to children themselves, expressing their aspirations, their views of what education means to their lives and what they expect us as adults, as decision makers, as powerful people sitting in this room to do for them. I could be a teacher. I could be a lawyer. I could be a pilot. A doctor, an astronaut, a journalist. I could be president. Everyone wants to go to school because everyone has a dream of what they would like to become. But without an education, many of these dreams will not come true. Education is a human right, but 80 million children are not in school. So why are these children missing out? For many children who are facing a daily battle for survival, there is no time or money to spend on education. The effect of AIDS on families has meant that many young people are looking after younger brothers and sisters instead of going to school. My name is Zini. I'm 13 years old. I live in Kibera, Kenya, and I'm the head of the family. I think in Kenya, there are so many children like me who are the head of the family, but they don't go to school. If you're disabled, it is difficult to get an education. I think it's right and good, good that all disabled children, whether they are blind or deaf, should be sent to school so that they can live a fulfilled life. Sometimes the reason why you're not in education is simply because you are a ghetto. Children in the poorest countries want to learn, but the simple fact is that many have to work to survive. Their governments want to give them an education, but just can't afford to. The richer nations promise to help, but so far have only provided a fraction of the money needed. All these children have learned so far is that these leaders don't keep their promises. So why is education so important? It is the best way to end poverty, and it can mean the difference between life and death. If every child completes primary education, an estimated 7 million cases of HIV and AIDS could be prevented in the next decade. 
It's a proven fact that a child born to a mother who can read and write is 50% more likely to survive past the age of five. We need education, good education. It's easy to achieve. It would change lives. And what we need to spend in one year on education is what the world spends in four days on arms. In the five years since you last met, to discuss how to fund these education promises. Millions of children have become adults without ever going to school. How many more will have to miss out on an education before rich countries act? We want to be in a school. We need education, good education for all. I could be a doctor. I could be an engineer. I could be the minister of education. Nelson Mandela said that if all children of the world join together, they'll be stronger than any government. So we are joining up from all over the world to tell our leaders to keep their promise. For a better education for all. For the first time in human history, you could give every child an education. Last week, millions of people around the world joined together to demand that world leaders keep their promises. So imagine what we could become if we had the education that we deserve. Everyone has the right to an education. By 2015, all children, especially girls, will receive a complete, good quality primary education. Millions of children have missed an education already because we are off track on these goals. Millions more will miss out if we fail to act now. In the 21st century, we are the first generation that has the ability to give every person on the planet an education. We know how to do it. We know we can afford it. The only question is if we will do it.